Hi there, in this video we're going to learn alarm instructions, which are categorized into digital and analog alarms. We'll learn them and also alias tags, during a project which will control the level of a water tank, inside factory IO software. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content, I have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Alright, this my hardware, and I configured that in Arslogix 5000 software like previous videos. Well, here are alarm instructions, the digital alarm instruction works based on a digital address, such as a digital input state. But the analog alarm instruction works based on analog values. These two instructions work similarly. So, I will explain only the analog alarm instruction. First, let me design a simple plant inside factory IO software, to explain and use the analog alarm instruction. Well, I insert a tank station from the right list. Let me check the inserted tank is in analog mode. If you remember, this tank was explained and used in lesson number 22. As you know, this tank has two inlet and outlet valves, and also a level meter. To control them, let me design a simple control box. I insert two potentiometers to control two valves, and also a digital display, to display the water level. By default, two inserted potentiometers can send a voltage between 0 and 10 volts to my PLC. Of course, I mean a virtual voltage, it's not real. Let me change its name. The first potentiometer will be used to control the inlet or filling valve. The water level can be a number between 0 and 300 centimeters, so, I must select integer mode for the inserted digital display. Similarly, I change the second potentiometer name. It will be used to discharge the tank. Note that, if inserted equipment must be controlled by a controller, they must be in no failure state. Remember, two inlet and outlet valves of the inserted tank, can be controlled by a voltage between 0 and 10. Also, the level meter sends a voltage between 0 and 10 to my controller, when the water level is changing between 0 and 300 centimeters. Let me click on drivers, to do the necessary settings to connect the inserted tank and other equipment, to my controller. First, the controller type must be selected. Then, in the configuration window, I must select my controller IP address, and also, its slot number. Then, some suitable tags must be defined here. The inserted equipment will connect to these tags. Later, these tags will be defined and used, inside Arslogix 5000 software. I prefer to don't change these tags, but I need to modify the count column. I don't need any virtual digital input output. But there are two potentiometers and a level meter. Their data type is real. So, I need three analog inputs. Also, I need two analog outputs, because of two valves, and one integer output for the inserted digital display. The next step is to define these tags in Arslogix 5000 software. The inserted equipment will connect to my controller with these tags. Well, like previous videos, I configured my hardware here. Now, before programming, let's define tags that have been defined right now, 
in the controller tags table. Here, you can see my real input output addresses. Let's define tags, which will connect to inserted equipment inside factory IO software. Let's write the PLC program. If you remember, each potentiometer sends a voltage between 0 and 10 to my PLC. Also, each valve can be controlled by a voltage between 0 and 10. So, I can use a move instruction, to get voltage from each potentiometer, and send it directly to the related valve. Pay attention, here I wanna tell you another way of using tags or addresses. Here. I want to refer to the first potentiometer voltage. I will connect it to the first virtual analog input with this address. FIO underscore real underscore input zero. So, the controller will use its value which is a number between zero and ten. But this address is a little hard for a new person, to understand the PLC program logic. So, let me define a new tag. Pot underscore filling. But, here, I select the alias type instead of the base type. An alias tag refers to a base tag or another alias tag. Here, I can select the FIO underscore real underscore input zero. Now, the move instruction goes to this address, and we'll see its type is alias. So, go to its connected tag which is FIO underscore real underscore input zero. This tag is base type. So, the move instruction reads its value, and send it to its destination tag. Now, a new person can understand the inserted move instruction, use the filling potentiometer voltage as its source value, according to this alias tag name. Similarly, let me use another alias tag, which refers to the filling valve voltage. Well, let me modify the selected tag. Anyway, the first inserted move instruction, uses the first potentiometer voltage, to control the filling valve. Similarly, let me use another move instruction, which uses the discharge potentiometer, to control the discharge valve. Alright, let's continue programming. The level meter sends a voltage between 0 and 10 to my PLC. So, I need to multiply it by 30, and send the result to the digital display output. Now, let me insert an analog alarm instruction. As you see, it has many parameters. All of them will be created under a name tag. So, at the first step, I must define a tag for the inserted analog alarm instruction. Note that, the new tag data type is alarm analog. Then, the alarm input value must be determined. Its value will be compared with alarm limits to detect the alarm condition. I can select this tag, 
FIO underscore int underscore output 0, which represents the water level, or select this alias type tag, which is connected to FIO underscore int underscore output 0. The next parameter is program acknowledge, which set by the user program, to acknowledge all conditions of the inserted alarm. It requires a clear to set transition, while the alarm conditions are unacknowledged. Here, let me use the first real digital input. Two next parameters, program disable, and program enable, are set by the user program, to disable or enable the inserted alarm. Similarly, let me use two real digital inputs for them. Then, the high and low alarm limit must be defined here, or inside the alarm properties windows. In this project, these parameters are the high and low limit of the water level. They can be a number between 0 and 300 centimeters. Naturally, the entered values must satisfy these inequalities. For example, if the water level exceeds this level, a related bit inside the alarm tag will be changed to 1. Note that, you can enable or disable each alarm condition, or change its severity. Severity does not affect processing of alarms by the controller, but can be used for sorting and filtering alarms. It can be a number between 1 for the least severe, and 1000 for the most severe alarms. Its default value is 500. Then, I can enter the length of time, that the alarm condition must be detected, before the alarm is reported. After that, a dead band can be entered. That applies to all level conditions. For example, based on these values, if the water level exceeds 255, the related alarm will be activated, and if the level is reduced to 245, the related alarm will be cleared. Here, we can check this box to require acknowledgement of all conditions for this alarm. Also, we can use the alarm class to group related alarms. For example, specify class tank to group all the tank alarms, or specify class control loop to group all alarms for PID loops. On the right side, we can determine rate of change limits in two directions, positive and negative. Sometimes the level changing rate is more important than the level. Inside the message tab, we can write a test for each alarm, or define a tag, and use its value inside the message. Alright, inside the next tabs, we can see general information like alarm message, timestamp, parameters, and the defined tag properties. As you see, the defined alarm tag has many parameters. You can search them on the help window, and read their description. The first six outputs will be activated, if the related alarm condition holds. For example, the first output will be activated, when the water level is higher than 290 centimeters. Let me use these bits of the defined alarm tag to turn on for real digital output.
All right, let me verify and download the program to my controller. In this program, I have used three digital input and four digital output tags of my real hardware. Now, let me connect real equipment inside factory I.O. to my controller. As you see, factory I.O. software is connected to my controller successfully, and also, all defined tags are detected inside the PLC program. Let's go to test the project. First, let me open the filling valve. Well, I must change my controller mode to run mode. As you see, in the beginning, when the tank is empty, these signal lamps are turned on. Because two alarms have been activated inside the PLC program. Now, the water level is 20 centimeters. The level is low, but it's not under 10 centimeters. So, only one alarm is activated. Let's back to the PLC program. As you see, only one alarm and output is activated. Let's open the alarm tag properties windows. Inside the status tab, we can see which alarm is activated, and also, when alarm conditions were detected. As you see, two new alarms have been detected. One of them has disappeared with the rising water level. Now, let me open the filling valve again. Well, as the water level rises, another alarm goes off. Now, there isn't any activated alarm. Note that, although there isn't any alarm, but two alarms occurred before. An operator can click on each acknowledge button, to confirm he has seen these alarm messages. Now, let's wait to raise the water level to 250 and 290 centimeters. It's expected two other alarms related to high water levels will turn on the two first digital outputs respectively. Well, two alarms related to two high water levels have been activated. Now, the tank is full. Let me close the filling valve, and then, open the discharge valve. As you can see, as the water level drops, one alarm goes off automatically. Note that, you can see and reset this number, which displays, how many an alarm condition was detected. Remember, I have used the first digital input, for the second parameter of the inserted alarm instruction. So, I can confirm all alarm messages have been seen, using the first real digital input. I hope you have learned the analog alarm instruction. The digital alarm instruction works similarly. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.